Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. This is our weekly rundown of updates, events, and beautiful things happening within the Blender Foundation, Blender Community, and also Blender as an app. And this week, we do have a lot of things, and of course, you would want to strap yourself in for this one. First off, we're going to start talking about the potential candidates that are now listed for 2.90. These are the bug fixes that should be coming or, you know, the things that they need to actually take care of before 2.90.1 gets released. Now, if you experience any bug or, you know, you experience any problems while working with Blender 2.90, it is advisable that you simply, you know, state these things so that they can fix them while they release the 2.90. Now, you can also notice that right here, we have a to-do list of things that are supposed to be taken care of before this gets released. Now, while we're still talking about this, the particle workshop has now been completed. Now, the particle workshop actually took place within the 31st of August, right up until September the 11th. There is a couple of things that was discussed around this, and you know, there were some notes, there were some conversations. A lot of people had what they felt about it. And if you want to take a look at them, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can check these things out. Now, some things include a dynamic modifier that can handle complex interactions. There is also a dynamic modifier that also has to do with inputs and outputs. There is, you know, a data flow, geometry, solver node, a meter node, and so on and so forth. There's also a couple of examples where these things might actually be used. And, you know, if you just want to read more about these things, link is going to be in the description for that. And I'm also going to keep an eye on this and see once they get these things implemented, you know, try them out and also show you guys how you can go ahead and get started with it. Now, while we're talking about things that we're going to get started with, Beacon 2 has started. Now, Beacon 2 for Blender 2.91 started off on September the 16th of 2020. Now, this has to do with improving and stabilizing all of the major features that are supposed to be with Blender 2.91. So, if there's any major feature that you're expecting to come over to Blender 2.91, that is not here up until this point it's probably not going to make it now with this said let's dive over to blender 2.91 and talk about some of the interesting updates and new features changes and stuff that are now available with blender so with blender simply opened right here you would literally notice that there is nothing big the last time when we talked about blender 2.91 and that was last week we talked about the fuzzy search. Now, the fuzzy search is actually activated once you press F3 on your keyboard. Now, when we talked about this, we talked about the pros, we talked about the cons, we looked at several examples and also looked at some ways that this would be improved. Now, it's very interesting to see that this week we are getting a search within the property bar. So if you would like to search for stuff, for example, if you go over to your rendering section and you type the word sample, you would notice that you can easily search for these things right here. Now you can easily scroll through and find stuff instead of scrolling endlessly to find these things. Now, one thing that they are actually planning to do, which we've already talked about sometime last month, last two months, is to make sure that this search doesn't just work within one particular tab, but you know, make sure that it works all through these other ones. And just in case you're wondering why is this red, you know, why is the highlighted section red? You can actually change this. So if you go over to edit, go over to preference, and let me bring this all the way down. Go over to your themes, go right here where you have properties within the search match, which is the highlighter. You can now change this to whatever color that you want. So this is just totally dependent on what you want to do and how you would want your search stuff to work. And for me, I think these are some very nice and healthy improvements that are coming over to Blender. And one thing which I also found out is if you go over to your tool section and you choose to start typing. So for example, let's say I just want to type stuff, you know? You would also notice that we have the filter add-on that simply pops up. You may have seen this before, and this happens once you press N on your keyboard, go over to your tool section, click within the workspace, you know, you can also notice this ones from here. If you like to clear this up and you don't want to hit on the X button, if you press Alt and F on your keyboard, this is going to be cleared all the way up. If you want to automatically search and let's say you're somewhere around here, you're just scrolling, you're trying to find something and you just want to automatically hit the search, you don't want to click right here. If you simply hit Control and F, automatically this gets activated and we can type the word emission or type EMI and we can easily 
find things here. And I love the fact that it's now even easier than ever to search around Blender and get things done. We have some very interesting updates within the outline. So by default, we've already talked about this one and we said this earlier that, you know, if you select on the collection, you right click, you have all of these nice colors that you can do, you know, you can play with, which is very, very nice. And we also talked about this while it was still within its very, very early experimental stage. Now, this is when you select any object at all and you simply click right here click down as well, right click, you now notice that we have a couple of updates to the library override. So contrary to Blender 2.9, where we only have the add, add, reset, reset, right now we have the resync and also the lit library override. Now with this set as well, if you also go over to the section where you have your modifiers, let's say we select, you know, a wireframe modifier and let's go ahead and select a subdivision modifier. Let's increase our subdivision up to a point like this. Right now, this feature is now here in Blender 2.91. And the feature I'm talking about is you being able to simply select your subdivision from any object at all, click, drag and drop it on top of any other object within the outliner. So you can now easily transfer, you know, your modifiers from one point to another. The last time where we talked about this, it was still within its very, 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 very early stage, but it's good to see that it has now been implemented. Something else, which is also making a lot of sense that has been implemented with Blender 2.91 is if you select this object and press the tab key, you notice that we also have this pretty cool stuff here, which you can use to edit. So you can now click, click and, you know, click around and you can play within your edit section and all of these, we talked about them before as very early experimental stuff, but it's extremely, extremely satisfying to see that we're going to get this feature with the final release. So with this said, I think there are some things that you guys may have probably heard, or, you know, you just want to see if at all it works. And I'm talking about bullying. So let's dive over and talk about this bullying thing. So if I also go ahead and delete that, let's also delete this as well. Let's make a couple of copies. I'm just dragging this out and this out. If I select these two objects, and I know that they are right here. Let's go in there and create a new collection and select one, two, drag them right into that collection and select this. Now the new Boolean system makes sense. We love it. We love the whole idea about it, but it even makes more sense now because right now you can now use your Boolean and Boolean an entire collection. What I mean by that is this, if I select this object and go over to the add modifier, go over to boolean by default. What you've always done is select an object. This is where it gets interesting because right now, if I go over to the operand type, I can now simply change this from object to collection and I can select the collection I want to boolean. So since we want to boolean collection number two, let's go in there and make some changes because we can. I can now select collection number two. And at this point, if I select this object and simply move it around, I can now boolean the object by using the entire collection. So depending on what you would like to do, you can now easily use these things and get some very pretty result. So if you want to make some insertion, you can do that. You want to do some union, you want to do some differences, you can literally do all of these things. And this is very satisfying. And of course, it's going to be very, very useful for a whole, whole lot of persons. We also have some nice modeling updates. Now, if you've ever done anything that has to do with text directly in Blender, you would have probably prayed and wanted to see the bevel modifier that exists with the default modeling come over to, you know, the text tool. And that is what has happened right now. If I simply bring out a text and make sure we rotate it to about 90 degrees if we go right in here and switch over to this section go over to the geometry section increase the extrude and right here you would notice that we have different kinds of bevel so we have the default round bevel object bevel and then we have the profile bevel now this profile bevel is something that we've already seen in the edit you know stuff and what we can do now is we can simply all right we can simply increase the resolution we want, play with the presets, and we can go with a crown preset. Right now, you don't notice anything happening, but once I start cranking up the depth, you can start seeing some nice, nice looking stuff. You can fill the caps if you want to do that. You can increase this however you choose. If you want to make 
some changes to this, you can also proceed to make these changes. And like we talked about previously, while we were talking about the new release of Blender 2.90, this same feature that we always wanted to see with Blender 2.90 beveling is also here. So if I simply select any node, I can initiate the Bezier curve and I can use this Bezier curve to create some very nice looking stuff. So this doesn't only work with the text because you know, you probably say, what about curves? This also works with the curves. So at the same time, if you throw in any curve at all, so we have a very simple curve like this and let's go over to the geometry. Let's, in, let's extrude this a bit more, go over to the section where we have as the profile, click right here and make some profiling changes. Let's do that real quick and you don't notice anything going. But then if we go over to this depth section and increase the depth, you can now start noticing some sort of possibilities that you can do with this. So let's increase the resolution real quick and you can see that. And then we can also go all the way. Let's make some nice changes to this. You can make this some, you know, supported loops, something like so. And this is very interesting. So you can go in and start making some very lovely looking stuff. And in terms of sculpting, there is literally no update for this week. As you know, the only thing Pablo actually talked about is there is now a brand new support that he's working on that has to do with tilt. So if you're working with either the script tool, you know, your smooth brush, there is now some sort of tilt enhancement that he's working on. And probably by next week, we're going to see how this works and then go through and play with it. Now, speaking of which, there is also an update that is right here or, you know, more like a new feature that is right here that has to do with Alembic custom properties export. So you can now export you know, some custom properties. And at the same time, you can also export instanced objects. Now, if you're feeling excited about this, there is also a very nice update. Now that has to do with the image editor drawing refactor. Now, if you simply pop up, you know, let's go ahead and get a brand new, you know, blender. All right. So once you pop this up and right here, I have a HDR, which we got from HDR heaven. So from here, yep. So which we got from HDR heaven. And this is actually 16 came up. And of course, if you would like to play with HDR, you can also visit Blender Market. I'm going to put a link in the description for you so you can see the HDR Maker 2.0 add-on. It's quite a lovely one and you'll definitely find that one interesting. So if we pop up Blender 2.901 and let's also pop up Blender 2.9. If we switch this over to the image editor and also load this one right here. So let's also switch this to the image editor and load this right here. You can see that moving this here it's quite easy if i repeat this image and move this it's quite easy to move a 16k you know stuff around let's also fire up blender 2.9 and do the same thing and you can see that in terms of performance blender 2.9 kinds of suffer a bit now let's also try that so if i press n on the keyboard right go over to the view select repeat image you would also notice that this kind of suffers now it is not about your you know your pc or anything is just about the performance of blender 2.9 and hopefully this is going to be one of the things that should be fixed and in case you're looking for something that has more performance right now i think blender 2.91 has way better performance in terms of things like so and before we go a huge shout out to city builder 3d so city builder 3d you know they have a brand new asset library right now which has to do with the soviet and this comes with 15 different assets and of course if you're looking for an add-on that actually gives you some pretty cool assets that you can work with or maybe you're just looking for you know something that you can throw into your scene create some very interesting looking landscape then you should take a look at the city builder 3d the guys from light architect are the creators of these and they are also the creators of the chaos tool the cable cam and also the light architect pack Link is going to be in the description where you can check these things out. Huge shout outs to the guys at Blender Foundation. So we already made announcements about this over and over and it turns out that a lot of people are actually engaging with it. And right now, the only position that is available 
is operations manager. So if you have a portfolio, you have something that fits it within this, and let's say you're staying within Amsterdam, then this is a very good fit for you. You can simply apply for this position and get good with it. So this is definitely going to be about it. I would like to know what you guys think about all of the things we've talked about today in the comment section. A huge set of updates are here and a huge set of things to actually make your life easier are also here. Tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.